let's see. Make sure to reload. I'm gonna try to be good about reloading through this playthrough because uh, I have a tendency of getting bit more because I'm in the middle of reloading because I didn't re you know just manually reload between rooms. Oops. A good reloader. You need better reload and discipline. Yeah. At some point, I'm just gonna start turning into Bill from uh, from Left 4 Dead. Just cry out, reloading, just like every 15 seconds. And then get left behind. Oh God! Oh, I had a, mm. I had a feeling. Yeah. yeah. I had a feeling mentioning Bill yeah. was going to be a bad idea. Yeah. Feel bad. And uh, this this note, we don't need this note. We're we're fine without this note. But I wonder what that tick tack tappy sound is. Chris Redfield. Deeper inside. Just hmm. fuck off. What are you hmm. doing here? Uh, looking at your brother's dating profile. He works out, I work out. We seem to have so much in common. We both know a lady named Claire. That's you. See, we, 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 have, about you. we have one mutual friend on Facebook. I sent him a friend request. What? And this Leon Kennedy guy is already asking me about Fuddruckers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, that took, that took me buff guard. <laughs> look, look, Leon Kennedy loves Fuddruckers, and he keeps wondering why no one will go with him. God damn it, Vanessa. <laughs> I regret nothing. Yes, he can. I'm sure of it. My brother's really cool, okay? He won't come. Better than your brother. Oh wait, you don't have one. Oh, sick, sick. Only child burn. You know, I, uh, I have to ask. Based on this behavior, do you think Steve? Puberty. The, well, <laughs> <laughs> true. Uh, I, I was also. <laughs> I was, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, uh, I was going to ask if Steve is uh, would be the kind of person that on Facebook would post like really annoying memes. Like he'd be like one of those people that post annoying memes. It's like I'm just kidding, bro. Like why are you mad? No, yeah, he. Mad. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> oh come on. I don't care. If 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 people I, haven't, I know. If, I, I, th know. I think look, if we haven't alienated people who haven't played this game before by this point, then I think we're just doing it wrong. <laughs> Look, it's a, it's like what a twenty-year-old game. I mean, yeah. I I think Steve would be the kind of guy though who would like post a lot of music videos. Oh my God, Nickelback music videos or Creed. <laughs> I, lo I love Cre no no no. Ah! Lucas is the Lucas is the Creed fan. Oh God! Oh God! Oh no, that is so true. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Luca, yeah, he is. yeah, Lucas would be the mixture of uh, Creed and um, Kid Rock for me. Mm. Yeah, that sounds likely. Kid Creed. <laughs> oh, uh, that's a terrible combination. Uh, 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 <laughs> I could, I could Rockford just, Island, take me away. Take, take us away, Rockford Island. So, actually, uh, you know, I'm mean to actually ask during this is. Um, what was your guys' exposure to Co Veronica? Like the first time you saw it, what were your first impressions, you know, both in the build up and when it came out? I think um, I was still in secondary school, so was it around 2000. So a friend of mine had said, Oh, I got this new Resident Evil game, and there's a sniper rifle in it, you can see it on the scope. I was like, Wow. He's like, Yeah, come over tonight and we'll have a game. And uh, we just completed that night. Wow. That's a lot. Oh, yeah. Well, he was, well, he just got off, gotten off the island as well. Okay, so you started in the uh, the Antarctic Claire segment? Yeah. Gotcha. So, wow, that could have gone better, by the way. I could have, mm -hmm. uh, have actually, you know, used the barrel and not have gone through much more than 6% of my calico ammo. That would have been nice. 6%. Yep. Yeah. Not not living that down. Oh no. Hey, hey, you're the one who brought that up. You said you said that percentage. 
Well, that's what I mean. How am I not supposed to say something? I, I'm holding myself accountable at this point. Mm. Yeah. We're holding you accountable too. Mm-hmm. So, um, so are the dogs. I want to say with um with Code Veronica, I by that point I was already you know deep into you know Resident Evil, so I I'd been looking up anything I could get at that point, and I think I got a Dreamcast partially. Like I was like, I'm gonna get this system when it comes out because eventually that. We're going to get a Resident Evil on it. I don't know why I talk like this when I'm 16, because I pretty much probably sounded the same. I was wondering why Mickey Mouse was here. <laughs> well, I was going to say Strong Sad, honestly. Oh, no. Oh. Well, I'm sad. I'm sad that I'm called Veronica. Yeah, I played it um, when it came out. I was super excited for it. And at the time I thought like, well, you know, this is, this is great. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've never enjoyed Code Veronica as much as the first time, I yeah. think. <laughs> yeah, it's very, I think it's very much a game you can only play once and really enjoy it. Yeah, everything's kind of fresh and new and there's this sort of excitement around every corner, but it doesn't, well, in my case, and th this is one of my most infamous for me personally infamous stories about resident evil for me was that i had this tendency from resident evil 2 and onwards that every new resident evil game i would get and beat within a couple of days and what happened in code veronica was that i played it in i got to the final boss in the usual time frame of two days and then i realized i did not have enough ammo to beat alexia at the end yeah that'll happen and it took me a month to get the progress back and do it again. I think I remember that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I'm sure you remember because I yeah. was so mad that you, you were, and... You were swearing a lot. Oh, I was I was mad. I was so oh, mad. Oh. Something happened to me because I remember the first time I played it, I never knew that there was a Switch. Yeah. Uh, Claire and Chris. Hmm. So I was kind of going into the, Ar uh, the Antarctic fight thinking, oh, this is going to be one of the last bosses. I better load up on ammo and health items. Oh, no. No, oh, no. So I basically got Chris Redfield running around, and he's got maybe three or four health items and maybe a couple of boxes of ammo. Poor screwed over Chris Redfield. Oh, yeah. And that is why he hit the gym. Mm-hmm. But I just kind of got to this that stage where I was just like, fuck this, I'm not playing it anymore. Yeah, more so than any of the other classic Resident Evils, this one particularly screws you over if you're not prepared for it. I honest, I honestly believe it is the most challenging classic Resident Evil game that I've ever played. And I'm someone who's actually yes. played and beaten multiple times the original 96 PlayStation version without using without using cheats. And which which is to say no that No auto aim. No auto aim. I mean, you guys saw me do uh do the run this past March where I almost made it. I remember I, I, I think one of those deaths, I, if I recall, I died right as I had the rocket launcher. Oh, yeah, yeah. There was a lot of swearing that day. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I, I understandable. I, I, I knew. So when you heard me loudly shout and scream, I actually had stepped like 20 feet away from my computer. That's how loud it was. Wow. <laughs> I was so mad. But anyway, that all being said, so mm -hmm. I still feel this is a much more challenging game because it does not give you enough ammunition to kill all of the enemies. And the mechanics of it are, especially when it comes to like the controls and like turning radius and things like that, it's pretty twitchy. Like I... It's weird. Yeah. You can either have a really easy time playing Code Veronica or a really difficult time, and there's usually not a lot of go-between. Yeah. yeah. You either have a good time or you have an awful time. Pretty much. And, like, yeah, Zero is difficult, especially if you're not prepared for when you need to have a certain chemical in a certain special area. Ugh. Oh, God, yes. Oh, it's, yes. it's similar. It's a similar kind of screwing you over, mm -hmm. but a little bit more manageable in the sense that you can literally backtrack. And here, it's just no. If you don't have that, you're fucked. Yep. If you yeah, if you miss, pretty much, if you go to an area, you're screwed unless yep. you got everything. Yep. 
I mean, like, I'm even having to make sure that I remember to take the the empty extinguisher because we're going to need that yeah. in the Antarctic oh, segment, yeah. like, big time. Yeah, it's like the the planning ahead that you can only get if you have a guide with you. I mean, I did, it was back in the day where I did go out of my way to make sure that I had enough money to spring for the guide. I was mm-hmm. like, I'm, I'm saving up my dollars by babysitting and I'm going to get me that guide. But like, I mean, Vanessa, you're the same age as me. We're both yes. at a time when, you know, you couldn't use the internet to look up information readily. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it, you could, but you had to know where to look. There were there it were. It was it was much more difficult. Mm-hmm. No, it was difficult for us because you know we had dial up. Oh yeah. yeah, no, and I mean I I did too. It was because I mean yeah, back in the day. Back in the day. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, you're talking to somebody who has printed guides that my dad got off Usenet for playing for all the move set, the move lists, the move lists, move lists for Virtual Fighter, you know. I definitely printed out like some guide for like Final Fantasy VII back in the day or something. I remember for some reason my brain goes, "You did that for seven. You mm-hmm. printed something out." I, I remember my first job was in a supermarket, and we'd sometimes get, we'd have a magazine section. And sometimes there'd be games there, and you'd get, like, the game guides. Mm. And what we used to do was, like, if the stuff was out of, out of stock or out of date or whatever, sorry, um, we'd send back the barcodes to the supplier and check out the rest. And I, I would actually be kind of going up to my, to my boss and saying, look, this stuff is being chucked out. There's a couple of guides here. Can I have them? Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's a good call. Yeah. Good, good call. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I uh, I used the discount when I worked at GameStop. Oh, I bet. Yep. Yeah, I didn't use the Best Buy discount as often as I as I maybe should have in some respects. Um, but I will tell you, um, I will not give the numbers for obvious legal reasons, but um, that discount is fucking sweet. <laughs> At Best Buy, <laughs> it's uh, nice. I mean, if I if it's sweet. if I do intend to do a uh, a retail job again, that's probably the first place I'm going to go. Go just like, please. <laughs> well, your first question should be: Do you still? I'd like my discount, discount back. <laughs> because I, I mean, like I've worked in a couple of places where one place would give you a great discount, another one would give you kind of like five or six okay discounts. Mm, mm-hmm. Like you'd get one huge discount, um, and uh, like just re- three or four. Qu- sorry, quick interruption. Oh. If you like the animals, you may want to look. You might want to look away. If it makes you guys feel any better, these dogs are already dead. They're very dead. They are no longer good boys. They're not good boys. They are bad boys. They're hell boys. And there's only one dog in the Resident Evil universe, and it is the Doberman. Well, you got the wolf dogs in um, Resident Evil 4. I was... I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that joke is never going to get old. You can't prove any of that actually happened. Other than, like, Leon went to somewhere in Europe and there was a plaga. You know what? Okay, here's here is some credit to that theory. That all of that was made up in, or, you know... Leon was just doing a D and D campaign or something. Um, the dog in Resident Evil Four is basically Huey from Haunting Ground. So, oh yeah, it is. So, what do you figure the odds are that Leon just played Haunting Ground and loved the game and like he worked it into his D and D campaign? One hundred percent. Leon was telling Claire about his trip to Europe and said, and then the dog, uh, it's that dog, his name was Huey. Are you talking about the dog from Haunting Ground Land? No, no, he's a completely different dog. And anyway, he saved my life. <laughs> and that's when I met the president's daughter. But you know, Did you know? <laughs> Did you? I, I, I have this like complete headcanon that they keep kind of taking the Mickey out of uh, Jill because she looks like Fiona Belly. Hmm. hmm. Uh, Ashley. Oh, yeah. From Haunting Ground. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. It's her dog. He didn't meet Huey. He just met Ashley's dog. 
that she brought with her on her vacation to Europe. And this was really just Leon picking the president's daughter up in Europe one day. Yep. At the end of Plaga actually showed up and he was like, well, I guess I got to make it sound really cool. <laughs> okay, so then there were these fire breathing mechanical dragons. Oh my god, Leon. And I outran several boulders. <laughs> Tell your brother about that. Tell Chris. Tell Chris I outran boulders. Leon, it's like he did. These worms, the worms found in the bottom of tequila bottles. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them. Tell them. Oh my god. Well, okay, so then that makes me think is, is basically then the other possibility is that he got food poisoning in his trip to Spain to go pick up the president's daughter from her like, you know, she was hanging out for spring break or something, and he gets food oh, poisoning. I shouldn't have eaten so many tapas. No. Oh. But they were so good. It's so good. Well, yeah, was so good. Uh. I shouldn't have had the raw calamari. <laughs> I mean, look, I, you can't prove to me that Resident Evil 4 actually happened the way that it did in the game. That is... No, nothing, nothing can prove that to me yet. Yeah. I mean, and if the... And I have this suspicion, like, the only way that Ada will ever show her love for Leon is to just go with it if she's around when he brings it up. Just, yeah, that that happened. She just shrugs and goes, yeah, I guess I left him a jet ski. See, I told you it happened. I, she left me a jet ski. And we rode it out of the island. I mean, what did you have, Claire? You had creepy incest twins. I had a giant m m clockwork small man dressed like Napoleon that chased me down down a whole hallway. What did you have? You had Alfred. I win. Yeah, but Leon, at least my adventure was real. Mine's real. Shut up. It's real. <laughs> it's real. It really I happened. You know, for being from 20 years ago, I still marvel at how well the, uh, the hair is rendered in this cutscene. Yeah, no, the hair is still really, really well done. It still looks like Lego hair, but it's good lego hair it's it's quality lego hair because usually lego hair just you don't even get like the movement in it mm. it's just an, a solid helmet i mean back when this came out it was really impressive at least like in the cg stuff mm -hmm. yeah I, mean, I always thought the environments were a little gray and flat yeah it's I mean, it's what happens when you move from pre-rendered uh, backgrounds to 3D and also doing it in, like, a completely different system. Mm -hmm. So, like, the, the switchover is always going to be a little Oops. meh. Yeah. Because, uh, like, uh, you, get to, you yeah. get to the other 3D Resident Evil games, like uh, the Outbreaks, I think, are both 3D? Yep, they're full 3D. Yeah. And, and those really have their atmosphere down it, it's oh it's yeah you know that that picture of pacha from emperor's new groove it's like yeah, yeah that help me those just, environments sing just right just right speaking of things that are not just right um steve voice acting um scale one to ten <laughs> minus 87 <laughs> <laughs> so what's what is even the scale here <laughs> well okay so Zero is Poochie, and ten is Paul Newman and Cool Hand Luke. Minus eight thousand three hundred and sixty-two. Um, uh, two Poochies. I think I think I think we can go with that. That makes sense. Two Poochies. Also, I love how they played like the really really dramatic music, as if like I feel any sort of danger in the situation. <laughs> you. I, I have no it. trigger discipline because I'm a goofy teenager who's been stuck here. Check me out, Claire. I'm Caster Troy. <laughs> but do you remember in um, Dino Crisis, you have the option of um, helping a scientist oh, yeah. escape well, with the poison gas. Right. I would love it if you could do the invert with uh, Steve here. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, you can't take these, Steve. Goodbye, Steve. I'm afraid I... I can't do that, Steve. I wonder if at the, uh, you know, Claire just asked, you know, hey, or said, hey, Steve, wait. And I want, you know, the last shot of that scene, she's probably just thinking to herself, huh, this is what it feels like to be Leon. So this is what he meant. This is it. 
when they meet up, she's like, okay, so that whole Ada thing? And he's like, yeah. And he goes, I get it now. She just like goes up to Leon, gives him a hug and says, I'm sorry. I'm I so sorry. You mean, 